So I want to do this video to do a testimony. I was with uh, the girl who is now my wife today, and um, we were dating. We had been dating for a couple of years at that point. At first, we were living with my dad because that's where I was. Um, and then we moved out and got our own place, and then we moved back in with him because uh, it was hard to get another place, I guess. She ended up being pregnant. We started getting the stuff together for, um, for our kid. The thing is, like, I knew she had always wanted to have a kid of her own. So, like, I knew that this was something she wanted. And so, well, we, we didn't really have our lives in order. We didn't have our lives together as much as we should have to have a kid. So that's what we started to do. She had some money that she had gotten from her grandmother that she had gone to visit. Some money from work. And I had some money of my own. We, we, so we went to Once Upon a Child. We bought, I think we got about $100 worth of baby clothes. And we got a bassinet. And... A couple other things that we thought we would need to begin with. The thing is, like, I had always been a Christian for my whole life. Well, for most of my life. Um, I grew up, I went to a Christian school, I grew up in the church. The thing is, like, my heart just wasn't really fully in it. And um, I hadn't really experienced God in my own way back then. Um, I hadn't experienced, you know, like, the blessings and whatnot. The thing that was just so amazing was just the way that God blessed us. But I think the fact that we were trying to put the effort in to get what we needed for our child was really, I guess, why God started to just bless us in, like, amazing ways. We we went to McDonald's one day, and just out of nowhere, this, this little girl goes up to my wife. She just, she knows that there's a baby in her belly. And she said, baby, and she started, like, putting her head up to her belly and saying she wanted to eat the baby and everything. It just made her so happy, and we started talking to the kid's mom. She said, oh, I have some things from when she was a baby, like, I'm, I've been wanting to get rid of, and I've, I don't know, if, which, could you guys use some stuff? And we said, yeah, of course, and it was just such a blessing, and it just fell on our lap, you know? And so she gave us, I believe it was two strollers and uh, a seat, like, like a little chair for the baby to sit in. And that was great, because that's what we needed. That's exactly what we needed. And then um, shortly thereafter, our friend got a... They, they went on Facebook Marketplace and they found a uh, car seat that we still use to this day. And it, it expiration date on it was until... It's like, we're still using it for a second kid. It lasted us for that long. Um, it's either 2021 or 2022. But, um, and it's just like, she just found it for free. And we went and we picked it up and we, like, we got a car seat. And of course, you know, you, you can't take your kid home from the hospital unless you have a car seat because you need to be able to catch a cab or have a ride in a car or something and have a car seat. And we had that at that point. We had a stroller, we had a chair, as well as a bassinet and the clothes that we bought. We didn't get any help from my parents. My wife wasn't on speaking terms with her parents. We just feel like our Heavenly Father, you know, God just blessed us and gave us what we needed. And we didn't even really pay for like a lot of that stuff. It just came and fell on our lap, you know. Later on, uh, we spent about a month trying to find a place that we could move into, and there was a couple of places, and they weren't our favorite, and I have to say, the, the best place that we looked at, our favorite place that we just, we really wanted, was the one that ended up calling us back after about a month. The thing was, like, we lived in this, this really crappy housing corporation. We had a really bad experience with them. Um, they had problems with bugs and then they would have to spray the place it was just the worst experience and it was the one housing corporation we would not go with and at the very last moment like right when we were about to give up we were we, we looked up main street and we started looking at places and we started we said you know what that's it we're going to just look into main street or we're going to go with them because that's the only option we had left in our minds so we we went and we um we looked into it, and we went, right before we went to call them, we got a phone call, right then, from, uh, from Boardwalk, the, the place that we moved into, and, uh, they said, we have a one-bedroom apartment for you guys to come in to look at, and we were just amazed, and we were so happy, and we were like, wow, what a, what an amazing blessing that was, and it was, it was just amazing, you know, like, God just really had her back, and he just really, he wanted, I get. I guess he just wanted us to come back to him. And, you know, like, the fact that she became pregnant with our daughter, who's just been such a blessing to us. Um, yeah, and she was told that she could never carry full term before that. It, I feel like it was kind of God trying to give us, like, you know, a nudge in the right direction. 
and just say, like, you guys need to fix your lives. You know, you guys really just need to just get your lives together because we wanted to. We wanted to get our lives together. We had gotten ourselves a bachelor pad before um, between the two of us, and we, we had it, and she worked full-time, and, you know, like, and, and I worked, and, you know, we, we, we tried to um, keep the place going, and, and like, we, we managed it pretty well with, with, you know, the problems we still ran into and everything. But, you know, this was God really just saying, you guys really need to get your life together. You know, like, I'm going to give you this amazing gift, and, you know, I'm going to give you what you need in order to keep this kid and, um, and and give you everything you need. And everything we needed for her just came to us. We had gotten a one-bedroom. It was amazing. It was beautiful, spacious, amazing area. Like, the people there were so friendly. It had this small-town feel. Everybody looked at you and smiled and waved at you when you walked past. And also, when we were moving in, they have a community church that happens in the office there, in the um, in the top part of it. And there was a sign when we came in to sign in the lease papers, and it said community church every Sunday. And I said, "Wow, we should start going to that," because like I felt that we at that point we owed God to try and to to try going to church again. Um, we went to this this church in West Simmons Village called West Simmons and Fellowship. And they were just so welcoming and amazing. She was about eight months pregnant at the time. The first time we came, she was just kind of waddling up the stairs, I guess, kind of doing the penguin walk and, you know, trying to hold her belly up because, like, she was, it was heavy and, you know, she was very big. But they said, oh, hi, welcome. Welcome to our church. It's so nice to see you. Would you, do you want to sit down? They got a chair, they got some chairs for us to sit down on and, and they offered us something to drink and, like, something to eat. They, they, um... I think they actually got a plate of food for her. They have this table, and, and they, they just put food up there every morning. And, like, um, they have coffee and, like, drinks. Every morning they have, like, something there that people can eat for breakfast or, like, whatever. Because, like, they know, like, not everybody has the money to always have food in their house. And sometimes people might need some help. And this church was just amazing. Like, they really, they really do practice, like, what Jesus was trying to teach. They're humble. There was people there from all walks of life. And it was just like, wow, this is a different type of church, you know? And they were completely accepting it. They, they never once tr said anything that made us feel uncomfortable or not wanted. Like, this is, that's what a church is supposed to be. And that's where we got married. That was our church. That was the church that really brought us closer to God. This is lockdown and everything, which, you know what? It was actually a blessing on us because we couldn't get down there. We live on the other side of the city from there now. So going down there was like an hour and 20 minutes for us. They started doing it on Zoom because that's what they were able to do. So now we're able to attend church. Like, God changed our lives. He really did. I used to be a really angry, depressed, super socially awkward person. Uh, there's a song. Uh, it's called, um, I don't know. It's about the 99... Um, it's that parable that Jesus spoke. It said, uh, if one of the sheep become lost, as a shepherd, would you not leave the 99 behind to go and find that lost sheep? It just really spoke to me because I, I don't know, I feel like my wife was that lost sheep at some point. And I feel like I was that lost sheep at some point. And I feel like God came, he found us, we were his lost sheep, you know? And I, I guess I brought my wife to God. We're raising our kids. In a Christian household, basic family dynamic: wife, husband, son, daughter. With with Bible study every night and prayers every night, and it's just it's, it's just really just changed our lives. I feel like things have just gotten better. There's been so many blessings, even like the last couple of days. There's just been all these just blessings that have been happening. Times can be tough with this whole COVID thing, the whole lockdown. Throughout this lockdown, I think we did so well because we had God. And some people don't. And you can see it. Some people who are like completely on the other side of that, they're just complete, just mental exhaustion and just depression and fear. So much fear. Oh my goodness. Like I've seen some people just say some crazy things like, oh, we're all going to die. Like most of the family's going to die. And like, get a Bible, you know, like, like go to find a good church if you can. I know it's hard. Sometimes you go to a church and people, they just, they make you want to run away, you know? And, and sometimes you get hurt by that. You need to realize that's not on God. That's people. 
people can be toxic people can make you want to run away but you know what you need to also always realize that we all have free will and people will use that free will to be just terrible terrible human beings and, and a lot of people will blame god for that god puts free will on this earth and he gives everyone the opportunity to choose you need to always stick up for the underdog just be humble and just be happy for what you have. And of course, you know, like from what I said in the very beginning, you can't just sit around and expect God to, to like literally do everything for you. You know, he's not a genie. He's, he's your heavenly father. And you, you need to realize that it's a relationship that you have with God. And you know, like you, you need to realize that, that you, you're not gonna sit there and be like, hey dad, give me a car. But the thing is like, if you're not working to get where you want to get to, God will bless you, but you have to put in the effort too. Would you care to show the people one of your blessings? This is Joshua. He's almost a year old. Joshua means Yahweh is salvation. We named him that because of the amazing blessings that God's given us. We also have a two-year-old, who's almost three. Her name's Claire. These little ones are just so happy mm -hmm. and full of love. And it's great, you know? Are you waving at the people? No. If you're having trouble with finding a good church, get a Bible, you know? Like, start reading it and just pray, you know? Like, like really just come to God if you can and... You know, he will bless you. And But, you know, you have to... You have to put in some of the effort. You know, you've got to pray. And then you've got to dedicate some of your time to God to... Because God does a lot for people, you know, that people don't realize. You gotta pray to Him, you, you gotta try to talk about it to people, and you gotta really just like, you know, if you got a family, you, you know, tell your kids about it, because it's amazing. You know, these kids are so well behaved. I guess I'll, I'll contribute some of that to Dry Nine, but I, I, I'd have to say I'll contribute some of that to the fact that they have God in their life, because I've seen some kids, their parents don't, they don't read the Bible, they don't, they just, they don't have that peace that joy in their eyes come to god and he will bless you and you know like your life will change i guarantee it i absolutely guarantee it if it doesn't change then you know try and seek god a little more try fasting ask for direction for where you're going you know so things have really changed you know it's and it's a lot of it's inspired us to live our lives different but i'm happy my life is definitely much happier than it used to be for sure and yeah, just love you and God bless and stay safe.